And we're live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the hell you are in the world, and welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. And we're here with... Look, I did it the right way. Look, 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 how clever I am. I pointed the right way. Uh, Harry, it's only been two years. Uh, Harris and Stormy Bear, how are you, gentlemen? Hello, hello. Doing well. Awesome. We'll throw in the intro, and then we'll get into the conversation. Right, so we're going to have a little conversation about the Stargate and the uses of the Stargate. So obviously it's a transportation. Turn it off! <laughs> turn it immediately on cue. <laughs> turn it off, 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 turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> oh, the hell. Um, so it's, it's, it's obviously a transportation device that you can use to instantly travel between worlds. Of course. What else? is the Stargate. Um, before we get into that, we always talk about what have we watched this week? What are we watching? What about you guys? What are you watching this week? What have you been watching? Anything? Or have you just been too damn busy? <laughs> You've watched Mission Impossible. Have I've watched started. a couple of things. <clears throat> Go on then. Yeah. Uh, I saw Mission Impossible 7. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was excellent. Um, Makes me really excited for the next part, of course. I, I still think it stands alone very well, but I, I did enjoy it a lot. Um, I finished Beef, which was great. I loved Beef. Uh, I feel like I watched something else. Uh, I can't think of it, though. Th those are the, the two big heavy hitters for me, I guess, this week. Oh, well, I, I guess I, I, I watched an, the, the penultimate episode of Mayans. The first mm -hmm. two episodes of What We Do in the Shadows, because their new season's there, which is great. And I'm sad. Apparently, my... We don't get I'm... that over here. We don't really get that over here. I'm sure I could watch it if I wanted to, but nobody does. What We Do in the Shadows? Yeah, but it's an old, like, American show from years ago, isn't it? So that didn't really... No, no, no. no. It's, it's only, like, it's new. This is really its uh, fourth no, year. I thought it was um, based on an old show. It was it, like it's a re a, revived sort of thing. No? 2015 movie. Uh huh. It's in the same universe as it. And they have a couple of New Zealand shows that are smaller <laughs> shows that kind of correlate with it too. So there's like monster shows for New Zealand, which are pretty damn funny. Uh, but it, it's, it's just it's just a little little small thing. I, I enjoy it a lot. It's one of the, the best rated <laughs> comedies out right now. And thank, thank you for it because we need more comedy. So I'm, I'm happy that it's there. Stormy, how much of uh, Walking Dead have you watched this week? Yes. Zero Walking Dead. <clears throat> Zero Walking Dead. So I, I started, uh, for whatever reason, I started re-binging uh, Stargate. So I started that, I think, last week. And I'm up to season three. Uh, <clears throat> Daniel just found out about the her Heresis child. Whoa. And that's, that's where I'm up, up to this morning. Uh, the other thing I've been watching is I watched the ever-loving shit out of the season two, episode one of Foundation. I was going to ask with the new Holy season. cat fuck. Yeah. I just Luke, watched it. I, I will say Lee Pace, I think, enjoys acting without his clothes on. Just saying. He just, Lee Pace just likes to act. I think he's he just, great. It's warm. It's a bit hot. It's a bit hot. Right. Yeah, on, right. Right. He's from the UK. He's in the desert. He, he you know, he's got to take some stuff off. I, so that I, was that was yeah. it was an excellent, excellent. Yeah, I just watched the last episode, ready for the new series, um, which is this week, or was it just it, come out? I forget. It, it came out Friday. Friday. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So I on Thursday I watched the last episode just to refresh my memory, because um, it's quite a complicated little fella. <laughs> Foundation. <laughs> you, have to, you have to have your wits about you. Harry you Sell is a little bit mad. You can't watch that while playing on your phone. Like, what happened? What? What? That, <laughs> something just happened. <laughs> you know um, I, I finished watching Silo finally as well, and oh man, I can't wait for second season of that, which will be God knows when, thanks to the stroke. But um, uh, yeah, it was it was quite excellent. So I really enjoyed that a little twist, and that was a twist and turn. No, no, Harris, you will love it. I need they to slow burn the crap out of that show. I've heard. I like it. I like it. They, they, they just sizzle away. And then they just then they turn up the heat and they throw you around and then they sizzle away again. But anyway, let's get into the episode. Let's do um, it. 
so we're going to be talking about the Stargate and how it could be used to something other than just a transportation device. So first on my list is using the Stargate as a weapon. Guys, what well for what did we for one, what did we see? When did we see it used as a weapon in the show? Half the time. No. Well, as a delivery device, you know, certainly, you know, you know, um, dial the gate and throw in a nuke. I mean, we that's mm -hmm. been Bing bong. If I'm calling nuke. <laughs> nuke. Thud. Dunk. Um, yeah, we saw the gate busted nuke, didn't we? Like the Nakwood thing that they thought would destroy the, the gate and it didn't work. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, as a delivery, I mean, just as a weapon of like putting troops through. Yeah, that's using it as a weapon and transporting things. So, um, yeah, the Asgard used it as a weapon. Brett, when did the Asgard use it as a weapon? I don't remember that. Um, so remind me, remind us of that, sir. I can't remember. So, um, we we prevented it being used as a weapon a fair bit by by having the the iris, didn't we? Yes, very much. Yeah. Where it, didn't the Asgard use the uh, gate against the replicators? Was that it? They trans. They used it, and they they put their weapon through it, didn't they? The anti Asgard weapon, uh, sorry, the anti replicator weapon. But then they used the gate to send it out around the galaxy, didn't they? So yes, they did. Yeah, yeah I think I, I think it's right. Yeah, I think that's might be what he's talking about. So that's yes, that's spot on. Um, but in that case, they used it as a um, like as a as a antenna didn't they kind of yep. antenna energy storage device oh yeah both yeah can use it as an energy storage device i think it was uh, yeah i think using it as a battery is actually a pretty good idea because it can actually hold a massive charge oh yes it can uh, and it creates energy itself to a degree so or at least the the, the dialing device tends to so yeah. um you've got the obviously Somebody mentioned a second ago, chilling in the basement. Hello, sir. Um, Sam did blow up a star. So that's the elephant in the room. She could have, you know, come up with a non-collateral damage plan, but she didn't. She decided to destroy everything. Um, hooking up to a black hole, suck a load of mass out of the star, sudden collapse, boom. Um, is there any other ways it can be used as a weapon? I mean, you can supercharge it itself and, and kind of, I mean, you could pull the car up purposefully if you wanted to. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of things you could do. You, you could Trojan horse it in a sense where you could send somebody a Stargate and then send troops in or something. Or you could send somebody a Stargate, have the first time they, they dial into it, make it where they can't dial out again or something, and then just, I, I guess, find a way to hack into it or something. and Lock in the black it. hole as, a, as the address. Yeah. 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 Be a wonderful Trojan horse. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, using it as a weapon, I think the greater control you have over a uh, a DHD, <clears throat> the more options you'll have. You know, I don't think like uh, Stargate Command, it didn't seem like it. There was set up for all of those scenarios. You know, all the things you could do because they kind of had to step their way through it. Imagine mm -hmm. if you could isolate one planet and redirect their uh update file of where of the positions of where everything's at and mm -hmm. just totally uh <clears throat> just totally hack their uh, database uh of, of addresses and mm -hmm. just you could create ha create havoc for a certain civilization or destroy a, a certain civilization's uh um interstellar travel and you could isolate you could cut them off from the rest of the galaxy by porting every if you had you know a really fine uh, detailed uh control of their dhd which i think we because sam because we had to macgyver a dhd basically i think they have like an element of understanding but at the end of the day it took masses of computers yeah uh, whereas a dhd is a little thing the size of a table what all i would do is i would take a stargate of a, a, a nearest of a, of a wealthy planet sort of thing or somewhere where a lot of people come and go and i'd put it at the end of a cliff but i'd have it pointing that way so as soon as you come through you're like ah! <laughs> He's like this lemming, and I'll call it the lemming planet. And everyone's just, ah. it's like, the lemming way. gate. Yeah, the gold, gold come through. Oh, bloody hell. It's like, it's the easiest way to do it. Your technology is not going to save you from gravity. So, yeah. Oh, no. Unless you go through in a, um, you know, a like thing. a little speeder or a dart or something. Or like um, Stargate Infinity, and you've got your little <laughs> car that jumps through. 
Did, have you ever watched Stargate Infinity? No, I almost did after I finished SGU, but I was like, no, no, no. Uh, the reason I didn't watch it was because it's nowhere. I don't even think it's on Amazon anymore. I think you can get it on DVD still, maybe, but no. It's I don't know if I wanted to, to pay money for it. <laughs> Nobody watched it first time around. But um, yeah, they had a they had like um, a, a, a sand buggy thing. What's it called? What's the word I'm looking for? Like a thing. Well, they had a, a, a car that they. I'm like, oh, I did Stargate. Come on, never think of that. They only have every SG one mission they ever went on. They had to. They uh, they could only explore within walking distance. Why didn't they take a car? I mean, not a full car, but like a dune buggy or something would be perfect. Yeah, that's what the Infinity had like a dune buggy. That's what it was. Yeah. Car. Buggy, like well, a little yeah, four person. The gate's pretty big. You could put a truck through it. Yeah, easy. Go for a drive. It's like really, really throw some of these new civilizations off. All, all the medieval ones with cars <laughs> driving around. When we went to the moon, the first thing they tried to do was, "How can we take a car?" You Americans are obsessed with cars. We are. Look on. Handy. <laughs> <laughs> we have the space. We need to drive. Yeah, man. You know, it's the, it's the greatest place to drive ever. There was no traffic <laughs> yeah, until so. you get in the city. <laughs> uh, that was when I thought aluminum for years was just this special magic material. Because um, I think I've said this before, we had an Audi advert over here, and it was interviewing the guy that designed the moon buggy. And he said we had to create this aluminum, and nobody ever done it before. And it's like, oh my god, this aluminum sounds amazing. I wonder if it's like aluminium. Um, but those words are obviously spelt differently, so it can't be that. Oh, no. Because um, so, um, there's a whole I in there you've forgotten about. So what else have we seen the star get used for over its time, other than a transportation device and as a deadly weapon? Deadly weapon. Um, well, it got yeah, used. It can time. be very deadly. Yeah, it got it's used, used to the time machine. By accident. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... I know that the, the gate came through and it hit like a solar flare and it put them back to 1969. But if you could figure out to do that on purpose, that's not a bad way to... Again, you could use it as a weapon or as a research tool or as, um, um, you know, for exploration, really, couldn't you? So All the above, yeah. It's, it's just how do you do it on purpose? Carefully. No. Uh... <laughs> I, ge I genuinely don't like time travel episodes in things. Um, I, I thought Stargate did it okay. But if if they could do it on purpose, and that, well, I'll well, say, imagine that they actually started using it as a time machine on the show. What do you think I would do to the show? Yeah, I think that would kind of, you can either do like space travel, you know, like Star Trek, or you can do time travel like Doctor Who, but man, mixing them up. I'm I'm trying to I'm really trying to think of a series that's done that well consistently as a main mm -hmm. theme. Mm -hmm. Space travel and time travel. I mean, yeah, that we've gotten burps here and there through all sorts of series. You know, um, well, maybe it's not something they have to do all the time either. They could do it for an arc, like two or three episodes yeah. or four episodes even for a longer one. And that could play out well because it, it has a more of a focus than trying to just make things work within certain parameters. Um, if the, mm. the ball is in your court, that's, that's funny. Yeah, way I, quite, I, did quite, I was smirking at that a second ago. Um, it's actually a time machine that makes more logical sense than um, than normal time machines. Uh, it does ruin shows. I yeah, that, that's true. Um, because... I also sort of think, you know, the time machine from like um, H.G. Wells. Uh, they're saying, well, the Earth yeah. is actually moving at like 30,000 miles an hour. And the star that we're in is moving. So if you had a time machine and you just went back in time but it didn't move, you would just reappear in space. Um, <clears throat> thousands of miles from the Earth, sort of thing. So it's a, but the Stargate, you get sucked in by the gate, don't you, sort of thing. So you get, so you get pulled in by the gate. So yeah. I'm sure the time machine is probably the only one in sci-fi that actually makes sense. Except That's a good stars point. Went, grand stars and things. But, um, so, I mean, it's logically, time machine. But I'm, I'm with you guys. It would be just, I mean, once by accident, fine. It's a fun little thing, but on purpose. 
I, I, <clears throat> you know, a Stargate already has like an element of time travel in it. Because uh, especially during the one thing I noticed during the first uh, few seasons after this next last binge thing is that they keep going back to old earthen cultures. Either yeah. Egyptian or Minoan or whatever. And it's like you start getting all of these flavors of humans in the past. And it is like kind of like time travel. I mean, you do see, you know, how these people live in Earth's past. But, you know, in, in, um, in present day, like um, uh, when uh, Sam has to wear this, you know, uh, Mongol burqa kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, when she's being traded around for um, stuff. <laughs> you know, but so, you know, you all you still get the those elements of time travel because you're going back to to revisit yeah. ancient America. Oh, ancient America. Ancient ancient time travel. It's yeah. Yeah. But you get to see all these ancient cultures and things because they've not been touched by right anyone for thousands of years. Yeah, that's a good point. Um so a second ago, where was it? There we go. So time is a jumper that they actually built in and put in Atlantis as well. And that is one of the things about Stargate I love. They've done a bit of time travel, but they didn't do it like Star Trek. You can't just fly around the sun really quick and go back in time. Because you would do that all the time. I, I mean, I, if I was a captain of a starship and I got up and I burnt my eggs, I'd be like, fine, we're just flying around that star. I'm going to go back to 24 hours and I'm going to have some nice eggs. You'd do it all the time. Um, but in Stargate, they had the sunspots thing, so it was like impossible to, you know, know when it's going to happen. And the puddle jumper that they destroyed. Yeah. So, much better way of doing it in Stargate than, um, than Star Trek. Yeah. If my football team lost, I'd be like, don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, um, and then we'll cheat. So they get trapped to beam my ball away, and we win. Um, that 0-7 day would never have happened. Yeah, yeah. Ex oh, Jesus, God, that's still... I still get comments on that. You had to bring it up, didn't you? It was great. <laughs> so bad. Somebody, somebody clipped it and sent it me, and what they do is they clipped each skull going in and me just going... <laughs> <laughs> getting more and more and then you could see it five mil I just gave up <laughs> like like something snapped to me and it's right. <laughs> the soul is broken <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of other things I thought about well Matt who's not with us today he, he last minute realized he couldn't he couldn't get with us sorry um he actually suggested using it as a lifeboat oh because oh, my pen's going crazy I've got kind of cool oh that is cool. Um, down Disney uh, <laughs> thing from um, Star Trek. Anyway, um, so he said about using it as a lifeboat. So okay. now, Harris, because you're a heathen, but of you course, don't really watch Star Trek, heathen. Um, <laughs> but me and Stormy do remember the TNG episode with the Dyson Sphere, and Scotty was in it. Scotty from the original series, Mister Doohan. Um, and he hid himself in the transporter, basically. And he hid himself in the transporter buffer, and it kept him alive for like 30 years or something uh, after oh, he wow. the Dyson. A bit. So Matthew wondered, could Eli have done that? I don't see why not. No, I mean, he, he could, you know. Um... It's, it's Math Boy himself, even smarter than Rush, who's probably mm -hmm. on the same level as Sam and Rodney, so... Or he could have just committed murder, unhooked somebody else, threw them out of an airlock, took their space. That would have been a lot easier. I mean, if you're going to math it out, you know, you have X pods and you need X minus one pods, you throw some asshole out the door. I'd have eaten them. One at a time. Pop them open, kill them, kill Rush, cut his head off, throw that out, and then I'd just be chewing on Rush. Throw the, not the body. Let's just keep that around as evidence. Well, you might not want to kill Rush. He's too, he's kind of indispensable in his own way. Maybe just two on some arms. Just two on some arms. Okay. Well, you'd get, you'd wake up with no arms then because, and, but I'd be, I'd be sat there with a foul, full belly going, God, and, 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 what would you have you been eating? Steak. <laughs> steak. Why haven't I got an ass? Rump steak. <laughs> uh, the bottom yeah. of the round roast, actually. Um. <laughs> but, um, 
but yeah, that, that's what I would do. But Eli could have done that potentially. Could have yeah. it obviously requires reprogramming and blah blah blah. Um, but but if you're able to do that, my other but, thought is sorry, go on. Uh, no, no, Seth just made a great point. If he's going to do that, he might as well just put himself in the Destiny's computer. Yeah, but then uh, what do you mean? Like his um, like like um, his girlfriend and Rush's yeah. girlfriend. I can't remember their names at the top of my head. Are you really alive? Not really, and then they're kind of trapped there indefinitely anyway, so they don't know if they ever can get them out, which is interesting. So I'd say go with the gate. That that That's pretty straightforward, and if he can do the math, he can figure it out. As long I as he's right there. I quite like my body. So um, when it used to work, it used to work. It used to be great. Uh, it, it, my, my knees were fine. My back was fine. No, not so much. But, um, Just go back around that sun real quick. <laughs> what, we, what they really need is like a solar flare gun that's orbiting Earth. You know, so you, you, it orbits at the right time, then you just you know engage the Stargate, then you pull the trigger on your solar flare gun whenever you want to time travel. <laughs> Eli the cannibal. All, all I'm saying is, at some point, you're eating your friends. Um, you know, it's just like. I remember we watched that. I watched that film, you know, the one where they they land in the Andes and the football team, and they. That was just, what I was just thinking oh, about. Uh huh. I was having that argument. My wife is she was over a beer, and we were sort of saying, "Would you do it?" And I was like, "Hell yeah!" I wouldn't just eat the dead. I'd start killing people. If somebody's there in the background and they're not very useful, I'm like, can you start a fire? I'm useless at starting fires. Bop. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna add to how much meat we have to eat per day. So. I'm <laughs> sorry. They'll rescue me within 24 hours, and I've eaten three people. Uh -huh. <laughs> no issue. I'll eat a cow. I'll eat a person. I'm not bothered. I don't see, really see the difference. Um, I might. I might leave for 24 hours. <laughs> well, well, uh, uh, like, <laughs> what is it? People are, are supposed to be very pork-like, like consistency-wise, and and I, I don't know about flavor, but you can find that one out. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, I, I, I think I feel this is an experiment that's going to get us in trouble. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, Secular Monk already said, "Go in full Donner Party." I see. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds about right. Why not? <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's um, tasty. It's um, get great crackling. Um, if you get, we're going to send you down to uh, New Guinea at some point. <laughs> get them some, get some cooking tips. <laughs> get some cooking tips. Oh, it tastes like duck on orange. It's just lovely. Oh, um, God. I was thinking, though, if you can use it as a lifeboat, could you use it as a prison? Yes. I was just thinking that. Ew, bacon. Uh, but Evil. but you made me think of it uh, earlier, and, and I, you stopped me, which was good. Why why not use the gate if we're using it as, as, a, as a placeholder or a prison, either or? Just like... I, not the best thing to uh, the quote necessarily, but Ant-Man uh, Ant Quantumania had Kang stuck down there for however long. You could essentially do the same thing with Anubis. Toss Anubis mm. in there. Put him in prison in a place where he actually can't do anything. Hmm. Well, we know... It would almost be really useful, wouldn't he, in like a political prison? Hmm. Anubis, prior? As, as like, you know, a political prisoner, he could be useful maybe. He could. Yeah. But I was thinking, we know there's dimensions. Yes. We know there's interdimensional space. Can a wormhole only travel to space and time, or could it travel through dimensions? Well, because space time itself is a dimension, so it could technically travel through any of these places. It would just have to rewire it to be able to do so. Or, or... You know, if the mirrors can travel between dimensions... You know, surely, you know, what if you had like, you know, some sort of hyper technology, and a star mirror, you know, where you could do either. You could, you know, anywhere in this dimension, any gate in this dimension or any other gate in another dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, instead of like the, you know, closing the iris, you just engage the mirror and the mirror uh, comes in. You just... Why not? And, and here and here, just one, just one thing I, I, I want to complain about. Um, oh, strap yourselves in. This, yeah, since uh, you know, I've been binging right the Stargate again, uh, SG1. When 
when Daniel gets, you know, goes through the mirror and everything, and he's trying to find the right one and get everybody back. Would it have been so bad if the people, you know, in the SGC put a sign up that said, Daniel, this is the one and gave like some, you know, put up like drawn some picture or something random where they would, Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm supposed to go instead of, no, is that the right Carter? No, that's a captain. Mm -hmm. Carter. Can I go? If it just put a sign up says, Daniel, come here. See, that's the thing. Daniel based that decision on basically haircuts, which seems to be a poor choice. I, I just want to see them do that one. And they've all got mustaches. Go, ah, that's the evil right. Next. Um, but the thing is, right, a lot of the dimensions, if that dimensional space theory is correct, would be very, very subtly different. So yeah. you could go through and think everything would be exactly right, but Barney's red. Barney oh the dinosaur and thingy, and he's just like, he's red instead of purple. And like, oh my God, I'm in the wrong freaking one. But that's <laughs> the only difference. And your, your dimension is now dead. Well, and, and that totally could have happened too, yeah. because... Talking just about dimensions and, and timelines, et cetera, et cetera. The, the multiverse was most definitely there at that moment. So did he go to the right one? He could have just gone to another dimension or, or another multiverse where Daniel had also left that multiverse and was looking for his way home. So would a sign even have worked? Because then there could have been an infinite number of signs as well or a few hundred thousand to go through. Well, that, that's uh, kind of what I say. If you the one number of some random picture on it, because yeah, it'd been more, you know, if you're putting up, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know, like a, a Snoopy cartoon or something, maybe not all universes would have that specific Snoopy cartoon. Think yeah. of it as, you know, yeah. think of it as an interdimensional blockchain. As I said, just said we should pitch this idea as this interdimensional thing. We kind of already did. So like nine, eight, about six, no, God, seven or eight months ago, I did a little series where we talked about who would the new villain be for Stargate, and I suggested the evil Ewoks. Who are they? The <laughs> well, Which, I kind of like the idea of evil Sasquatches just as much as evil Ewoks. <laughs> well, there you go. But anyway, the Furlings, I said that there's a segment of the Furlings had been imprisoned, and we accidentally let them out. Um, and and I, I think that was a brilliant idea, but... A lot of people thought it was awful. William <laughs> RMs, thank you so much for the contribution, sir. It really helps out the channel. The Stargate universe can always count on the intervention of the ancients, some of whom, such as Merlin or Omar, were willing to help humanity. As which is damn right. When if we got ourselves into a real mess, would somebody like that pop down? They're not supposed to. They're embargoed, but they do. So whatever's necessary for the story, perhaps, William. Um yeah. But um, I like the idea of it, it being used as like a prison, and um, and that, that, that like you said there that, that maybe we're experimenting with the gate, and we open something that we shouldn't, and something does come through. Um, I like that idea. Yeah, a little while ago. Yeah, the furlings were trapped in a dimension, so they're trapped in a pocket of space. Was my idea, and we accidentally let them out. Um, and they no, oh sorry, they they. Got, they got themselves out when the Asgard, in my idea, the Asgard were the gatekeepers, so they had the keys. And when the Asgard were gone, the Furlings escaped. That was my idea. And that was what I suggested. Anubis. Anubis was... So let's just discuss... I think we've, we've, we've whipped through that really quickly, to be honest, in less than half an hour. That is everything oh, no. that you can be used as <laughs> the gate for. So let's talk about something else. Anubis was way too overpowered to be real fun for me. Discuss. He's my favorite. Well, he, he, yeah, I mean, he was like, uh, had everything going for him, you know. He does get a little boring at times. I don't think they ever let him get too, too boring. And they kind of like push him to the side and let somebody else come in and, or, or let something else happen uh, to keep you in, entertained and, and, and intrigued. But I, I can understand it. Uh, Anubis is just. Uh, He's he's um all powerful in many ways. Like there's nothing you really can do unless you bring a war with the ancients. But you'd have to almost start a war with them just to get them to do anything about him. <clears throat> Which would be like a, a three way war, or some weird sense. I don't know. Three way. Okay. 
Okay. I, I that's why they named him. They, they did build in elements of weakness, didn't they? Because he didn't have a corporal body. Yes. And when okay. he did jump into a body, he, he dissolved it, basically, from the inside out. So, I mean, there, there was elements of weakness. Um, he was worried about the ancients. He did build up quite slowly because he was worried about um, the the system lords at first. Um, but he, he, he got past that quite quickly. Mm-hmm. Um so I, th- I, I, I don't agree. I think, I, for me, he's my favourite villain. But I think maybe maybe that's why they didn't use him as much as maybe other villains, because he was overpowered. And But what were the Ori? Well, the, okay. The, the, I think with there is a religious aspect to Anubis too, but I think the religious aspect of the Ori helped them in their plot and, and, and their story kind of go forward a little bit more anubis was I, I loved him in the diner uh but he, he he was too uh oh i just had the whole thought in my brain before i started talking and this always happens uh <laughs> it's, it's too early um not really uh it's done. i'm more done alcohol lovely yeah, there you go uh but but he he was too too um what's the word i'm looking for he he He's not a Deus ex machina. He, he's he's a uh, MacGyver, a Mac- MacGuffin. No, he was he's a. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for something. Keep going. I'll I'll come back to it. I'm I bad. mean, he was he was because he was so powerful. He could. It didn't matter what well, we threw at him. He adapted. Didn't any change. That, that, that's I guess where uh, his stuff. Nothing like a brain fart. I brain fart once a day. It's it happens. <laughs> uh, but day? that's my really? thing. Once a day. And so maybe maybe is too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's a lot going on upstairs. Sorry, uh, but uh, I, I was thinking. I, I feel like where the Ori can be pushed into a religion, and and the religion is very based off of the ancients. They're essentially the ancients, but like the cousins, kind of like the Asgard and the mm-hmm. and the uh, and God Pegasus galaxy. Galaxy. I almost said Prometheus galaxy. I was like, that's not right. Uh, the Pegasus galaxy, Asgard. That's essentially what the Ori are to the ancients, mm-hmm. and they're just a, a, a little different. And they're not so rooted in conceptualism, where Anubis was very conceptual. Everything he did was a, a, a concept. It had mm-hmm. to have some sciencey thing that, or some religiousy aspect to some sciencey thing to to put it into place. Where the Ori were walking amongst us and, and could interact with us on, on a physical level at any time, and then do their weird, creepy stuff. Does that make sense? Kind of just because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing I liked about the Ori and the Asgard, and then the Ori are probably the least favorite. We get comments about se- seasons nine and ten quite a lot, and it's if SG one went off a hill, it went off the cliff in season nine. Um, we see, I seem to get they jumped the shark and things like those comments we get. <clears throat> but I always really liked the Ori, but I liked that the actual the only difference between the Ori and the Ancients was that the Ori thought they should interfere with humanity and the ancients thought they shouldn't other than that there isn't really a difference between them they weren't evil for evil's sake no uh, really they just kind of liked people kneeling down to them hyper narcissist yeah the, the, the their bad i guess the, their biggest bad trait was that they thought in a similar pattern as the the ghoul did a gold. They just wanted uh, people to worship them, and I guess it did give them more power. So it's similar in, in certain ways, of course, because their power is more f- spiritual, I guess, than than the gold. Who? Oh yeah, we just have a bunch of people now. The um, they, ah, they kind of they were a little bit shadows for Babylon Five. I kind of get that the Ori were it's just a, a uber powerful. I, I do understand why people don't like the Ori, right? but the mm-hmm. thing was, the chick from Firefly was in it, and I love her very much. So Claudia Black, okay, and Claudia Black was in it, and I love her very much as well. And I just love it that when she went for the interview for that, do you think they just sort of went, "Do you mind wearing almost constant leather?" And Claudia Black was like, "Okay." <laughs> not Claudia Black impression. I mean, she. Looked, I thought she was great. Her bouncing off Daniel was some of my favorite stuff in Star Trek. Oh God, God right. I think that's that's really the my, my favorite part of all of seasons nine and ten is is Daniel and Vala, and I I, I do like uh, uh, Cameron Ben Browder's character. I, I like him a lot, but 
Um, a little too sorry, little too late, I, guess. I did forget her name for a minute. I have to admit, I did forget her name for a second. Um, I don't think the Stargate producers were, we're, we're just doing questions from the from the audience now. Yeah. Screw it. We burned through the, um, I thought we'd be talking about the Stargate thing for ages and we just didn't. So, but that's the fun of doing it live. I don't think they were obsessed with hiring five for that from the Firefly necessarily. What they were good at though was any, if, if Stargate, if any sort of sci-fi show got cancelled, they were sort of like cherry picking. Oh, we like that guy. That one like that guy. is too uh, awesome here. Yeah. But I mean, since, since we're going back to you know, the comments from the uh, chat room, Popcorn mm -hmm. Power had one. It was way upstream. He said, uh, talking about you know the, the blockchain trying to get a a Daniel to or, or the SGC to put up some unique sign so Daniel could hone in on it. Yeah, uh -huh. And so Popcorn said, um, yes, but all the other universes would be putting up a sign saying, Daniel, this one here. Uh, that's true, but I got an idea how you could get around that. Yeah, that, yeah that's it. So what if, you know, they all had the, the, uh, the, going through the gate, they had a dial in uh, device, you know, where they could, you know, produce a signal and the, in the, and uh, it would open the uh, iris. Well, what if you had a seated um, number generator, much like, you know, Oct you know, if you're in business and you work for a big yeah. company, you got Okta, you know, you have to punch in a certain number and it has to be reflective of the other computer always, already has that number on stored. So what if you just had some device, you just got to pick the one that matches your code, your code on your arm. You see, and therefore you couldn't have probably couldn't have the same code because they're both seated to it. They're like entangled in kind of a manner. Yeah, it'd almost be like a dial home device, right? So you have a or the you know the the, the thing we had to open up the iris, right? But it'd be a randomly generated and blah blah. Yeah, um, but then you would have to actually be physically, like, like you said, if it was somehow entangled or something, so it was actually physically connected. Um, because I thought that my first instinct was well, it's only the universe that you're in that you will have asked to do the sign. But actually, if we're talking about an infinite universe, you'll have done that an infinite amount of times. So there will be a load of universes where you've done exactly the same thing. Um, but I can't get my head around infinite. So I think that's a mathematical thing. It can't actually be infinite. I think there's, there's a really good, I think it's Netflix. There's a, a documentary on infinity. It'll bend your brain, bro. It'll bend your brain. Uh, uh, oh, 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 just infinity in general. I thought you were saying there was a documentary on Stargate Infinity. I was no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <Just, laughs> documentary on the the concept of infinity, and it'll be, break your brain. So have a couple pints, then hit play. Because I mean, even the, the thing, even space isn't inf infinite. It's it's. I saw one thing. They said it's horseshoe shaped. I'm like, what? <laughs> I can't. I can't do horseshoe shaped. It was. It's literally like a horseshoe. Yeah, but but in, in the one theory is that if you travel for long enough in the same direction, eventually you'll end up back where you started. Um, or it's horseshoe shaped. But so I, I can't get my head around infinite. I just can't. It's it's you know it's not it's not a concept. It's like somebody started talking to me about the concept of nothing, and it's so fundamental to science that that nothing is. Is you know we base everything, on, but actually, if you start thinking about what is nothing, well, you'll fry your brain. Well, 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 there is no such thing as nothing technically. Uh, that, that's what I, I, I read something last year. I don't remember what it was, but there's a, a group of people that subscribe to nothing is just quantum foam, and it's something that we haven't really learned how to even quantify or comprehend fully yet. Of course, it, it's it's hard to even start thinking about that kind of stuff, but nothing. It's technically just quantum foam, which yeah, there were, be endless in there a way. There's an article I think is on New Scientist uh, yesterday concerning this very thing about you know the lack of nothing in quantum foam and how everything is entangled, you know, and um, quantum. It also it goes back into to, uh, current research saying that, you know black holes, some of them can be immune to heat death. Well, if there's something that can be immune to heat death in the universe, well, that just, dude, that rewrites everything. I mean, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN really gave a lot of people just migraines. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating, and, and, you know, the data is the data, but it really upended everything we know. It's just like, um, 
like like uh, he Harris was saying, it's you know there's no such thing as nothing because of the you know the quantum foam, and it's like if you have any kind of random square uh, or cubic uh, meter of space, there may be one hydrogen or one helium atom in it. But then it's also chock full, we now understand, of quantum foam or quantum, you know, quantum particulates. And it's like those don't, you know, we can fly as fast as we th can through them or we fast as we want through them with no fear of impact. So what are they made of? It's, it's like water, but not, but it's like water, but not, you know, and so it's. Uh, I mean, this it, it is such a new science, and it is such new ideas and new ways of how to think of things. That yeah, migraines all the way around. Well, we just got two good comments. Seth said our universe is inside of. Oh, I didn't read that one actually. I was too too above that. It was Lewis said a lot of things to think about, and you can't understand the mind of God. All right, shall we throw a wrench in it? Just quantum foam. I don't necessarily subscribe or adhere to this theory, but. Quantum foam, just thinking about it, is if nothing is really not nothing and it is something and it's just something that we haven't quantified or, or comprehended fully, could quantum foam just be pixels in a way in our matrix? Are we in a matrix? Is, is that why nothing's not really nothing? And then obviously this is a whole another little sci-fi route to go down, but if we know <laughs> nothing's not nothing... Is the universe start dissecting the quantum particles to see what they're made out of? I mean, it's a rabbit hole, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, and it was a comment um, uh, uh, by a chilling in the basement. Zero was invented by India. I could swear it was invented by Bank of America because they keep reminding me of this zero. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "This is going to be the smartest comment ever," and it ended up you bastard. You would have a math concept in your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Please um, eradicate this mass concept and put some freaking money in. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Brahma Gupta. Yeah, Brahma Gupta is a brilliant mathematician. Yes. Uh, it, was, it wasn't that even that long ago. Was it 1,600 years ago? Something? Was it 4th, 5th century or something? I well, it was, it was when uh, Europe... Yeah, all that was when Europe was, you know, burning uh, women at the stake for being witches. You know, the, the, actually, during the Dark Ages in Europe, uh, Baghdad was the center of scholarly research and academia on Earth. You know, the, uh, the, the amount of uh, uh, knowledge that they gained and pushed forward in terms of astronomy, biology, physics, uh, just mathematics alone is really something to marvel at. What, one third of our stars in the sky all have Arabic names. You know, and um, lots, I mean, and also in India, a lot of the places that weren't burning people at the stake was really, you know, uh, cradling uh, science and mathematics. Mm. Kind of crazy. Stargate's down. Yes. Yes, right. Uh, it wasn't Anubis, was it? Oh, no, because she did it twice, didn't she? And she destroyed two stars. I think she, yeah, she, she, she's got two on her list. Yeah, because they joke about it. Oh, one was a one was a, um, a a fleet of ships, wasn't it? Can I throw an idea past you? That it's it's a video I'm working on. Yeah, um, for this week, and I want to throw, and this is going back to Stargate a little bit. But right, so Jenny Stiven was on Dial the Gate last night, and one of the things she was talking about was the new Citadel TV series. Um, a lot of people have been saying it bombed. It cost two hundred and fifty million dollars, and it bombed, and it didn't. It's a nonsense. It did really, really well all over the world. It did very, very well in India. I mean, like, very well. It just didn't do very well in America. And Amazon don't really care about that because they've started to realize actually the international audience. They basically realized that more people live in the rest of the world than live in America. They yeah. did some math. They were like the zero, but that's a concept, so we'll just forget about that. And then we've got yeah, there's that. So they realise there's more people. They realise that a billion people in China is bigger than than America. So um, so they were saying that Amazon might be looking at that model for Stargate. So what she was basically suggesting was you could have a Stargate series. 
that's based in um, America, you know, at, at, in Colorado. But then you could also have a series that is related to it and in the same universe, but maybe based in India, filmed in Indian. Thing. One of the things I thought was like, you could have like the three or fours. You could have a series based aboard a Chinese three or four, which we saw. Um, and they all speak Chinese. It's a show for China, but it's in our universe and it, and it affects, they all oh, affect each other something. Is that something you'd want to see? Actually, like international? Anywhere else besides China, yes. And, well, I'm, and, not China, I'm just trying. There's 1.5 billion yeah. people in China. Mate. They're mm -hmm. going to want to. Well, the, the, the India one, for damn sure. Because uh, they have dancing. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun. Imagine all these dancers coming out of Stargate, you know. The, 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 yeah, all that business. The other a little thing Bollywood, would be a little Hollywood. It'd be great. Yeah, a little bit of Bollywood. Just chinked up. A they would just break out into a dance, into a dance. <laughs> thing, wouldn't they? Um, but this is what they're doing with Citadel. There's, they've got the main series, and then there's going to be um, like the Indian Office version, and there's going to be a couple of others. So, um, but they're all going to be in the same universe. They're all going to affect each other. Blah, blah. But I was thinking this is could be perfect because then a series could be pulled back to. Um, you know, like the movies could link them all or something. You know, yeah. There are so many ways they could do this. But that got me started thinking about is Hollywood becoming irrelevant? Well, I think Hollywood has been irrelevant for some time. You know, uh, there, it's just lots of money in Hollywood, but in terms of artistry and storytelling, uh, back in the, I guess it was the 90s, maybe the late 80s, early 90s, there's a thing, you can probably Google this, or, or maybe it's in Wikipedia, uh, called for Chinese filmmaking, called Fifth Generation Chinese Filmmaking. And um, <clears throat> it was a series, it, it was a, it was a uh, kind of a generation of filmmakers that was making some of the best films uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, um, Raise the Red Lantern is an example. Um, and they did it with like no money at all, you know, and, you know, with, with, <clears throat> with, with and I think without little, with very little uh, government uh, intervention, mm -hmm. you know, even these days, the uh, studios interfere with productions. You know, American studios interfere more with productions than the Chinese government interferes with Chinese filmmakers. Yeah. If that doesn't boil your blood, I don't know what will, but just, uh, yeah, I, I don't think Hollywood, I mean, Hollywood's a big machine, but it's only a big machine because it's got a lot of money, not a lot yeah. of money because it's got a lot of talent. That said, all the, the like, um, <clears throat> the guns of the world and all of that, they're still great filmmakers, but they're under more, ma under more supervision with uh, their uh, production companies and their studios, then I, th it's just a personal feeling, then the Chinese government gave the people of the uh, fifth gen or the, yeah, the fifth gen uh, filmmaking movement. Well, it's not just your personal opinion, right? because in 2016, China passed a law that banned all content that was deemed to be harmful to the dignity and honor of the interests of the People's Republic of China. So, I mean, that's the vaguest law you've ever heard, but no yeah. Chinese filmmaker has been able to make anything that's deemed to be harmful to the dignity and honor or interests of China. And, and, and you know what that means? Sorry? Well, it, it, one of the first things they did, which pissed people off right after that, was they take black people off the posters. They took Finn, John Boyega, off of all the Star Wars posters. They didn't allow him on the posters, and he is like 90% of The Force Awakens. And of course, his role gets lessened as it goes on. But they did that all over the place, and it's it's sad. It's not right. It's just not. Also, what's what's the point? Do they not have black people in China? That could be a whole different conversation. <laughs> they may not have a very large black or African 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 Chinese population because they didn't have the um, migration that we had. Obviously, I mean. We have a Chinese population in here in America because of a migration mm -hmm. out of China, not in. Um, so 
but but what how would that affect you know the the dignity or their thing to see like oh look there's black people they exist what um you know it's like i don't i don't get it i don't get i don't get why it'd be but they left them in the film yeah the, you can't edit around all that but but the, there are like you can edit around and cut some scenes out from them across the uh, globe, and they have done that uh, for oh, different. All films. The whole. I don't know if they did that for Star Wars, but I wouldn't be surprised. Oh. It's sad. Look at the Hong Kong movie industry. Yeah, years doing some of the greatest martial arts movies we've ever seen. Um, you know that's where Bruce Lee made his best films with Golden Heart, yeah. um, and obviously now that's gone, banned, done. Adios. But um, I just wonder whether Hollywood's time has been is, is the dominant force probably in world entertainment, which I think is fair to say that has been since the 20s. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe a bit later than that, because, I mean, British cinema was pretty strong until pretty much maybe the early 50s. Um, <clears throat> now, the rest of the world has cinemas Whereas maybe they didn't 20 years ago. They have a disposable income, which maybe they didn't have 20, 30 years ago. You know, like um, China's wealthy and developed and and all of a sudden, nobody wants to watch dub TV, so they watch their own. And okay, yeah. what they used to make was crap, but now what they make is actually pretty good. Yeah. And, you know, they, they're they being taken over. I think about films like, um, I think, was it called Great Wall with Matt Damon a few years ago? yeah. Now that was a bad film, yeah. But it was a first try at doing something that never really been done before, and that's making making well, a Chinese film with an American actor. So in theory, they do that all the time. Arnold Schwarzenegger has been making those movies for two decades. There, that that's that's a frequent mm -hmm. thing. Uh huh. I don't to to the point of the Great Wall though, where no, that that was like big big budget version of it, and it was a big big fail, I guess, because of it. Because uh, at the same time, it, it's, it's one of the big issues with. Reason. Sorry, so it what? It didn't make any sense. It was virtually incomprehensible. You could, it was almost unwatchable. Well, that, that's the thing with Marvel and uh, Star Wars, even to a degree. Star Wars, thankfully, has such a rich universe that it can kind of stay within its own uh, uh, well of information and, and culture and all that kind of st stuff. But Marvel's really been pushed back where, hey, if you have to appease everybody, nobody's really going to love it. You're going to annoy everyone, yeah. Mm hmm. And, and you can't make a film for everybody. There's going to be groups of people that don't like your film, and that's okay. But you got to make the story at hand that you want to tell. And and I think trying to dilute those stories down is what's put us in this kind of space. But but I, I don't know. I don't think Hollywood's going to die necessarily. I just think the competition's here, and I think it's a great thing. I think there should be more competition. New York's huge. Uh, London's huge. Vancouver's huge. All these places are huge, but now there's Bollywood and Tollywood, both in India, because mm -hmm. India is larger than China population-wise now. That happened in the last Ooh. census. Mm -hmm. uh, where I think China's is not down to where, because two censuses ago or whatever, it was 1.1 billion in India and 1.4 in China. I think it's like 1.3 in China now, because uh, they've mm -hmm. just been going down. And then India's like 1.4 or 5, 6 or something like that. I was like, when you don't let your population have more than one child. Your goal That's to, what they desperately needed to do. Uh, uh -huh. India, just like now, nah, religion, we don't, we don't want to do. Yeah, that. but but India has Bollywood and Tollywood, which are getting bigger and bigger. Bollywood's really like India's thing. Tollywood is their international kind of more version of things. That's the film. Like RRR is Tollywood, not Bollywood. Uh, yeah. Stuff like that. So there are some differences. <clears throat> but then Jenny Steven brought it up yesterday in in the the Gate World Down the Gate stream which made me super happy. She talked about Nollywood, Nigeria's newest yeah. uh, uh, filmmaking kind of thing. In English. Was, yes, because we only gave it back a few years ago. Yeah, but Nigeria is the fastest growing country on the planet. Like, yeah. <laughs> they, can, they can bring out some no, cool no, stuff. No, give Nigeria back. We, we well, he, he, here's, he, here's something that, you know, that is really democratized filmmaking, is now you just go get you know, a fancy um, uh, Apple laptop and um, get an Adobe, and you're off to the races. There's nothing you can't do, literally. And I mean, most like um, I was watching one of the uh, special features of one of the Marvel movies, and they're they're editing the whole thing in uh, Adobe Premiere. Hmm. No, no, no specialized, no 
$50,000 suite of tools. It was just Adobe Premiere. Hmm. And it's 55 oh, bucks a month for all the tools. Yeah. And so the, the cost of filmmaking has really come down. I mean, you can, you know, shoot AK for nothing. I mean, aren't yep. there some, you know, uh, aren't there, a, isn't there a, a, a Samsung phone that now shoots 8K? I don't know about that, but. Or one that's on the, one, one's been announced or something, but I mean, 8, 8K is simple these days almost. You know? Uh, sort of, kind of. We're still streaming in 720p, but, you know, I, I've, I've been trying to piss off StreamYard just a little bit to at least let access to, to, to better versions of streaming. Obviously, it can halt the stream, but. Yeah, don't, please don't diss StreamYard. Just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> gone out, damn it! It's not like. Did you see the um, you know the podcast guys? Um, they did a video where they um, they really slagged Amazon off, and they got demonetized within about an hour. Um, they said it was within ninety minutes. They were like, "Now, I'm not saying this conspiracy, but hello, I'm hoping they get monetized really quickly again." But um, but it, yeah. was, it was a little bit ironic. That it was like that was quick. I mean, Amazon were on that. <laughs> uh, excuse me, YouTube. Them. Them. Um, okay. Captain Cave Man has done another thing. Hollywood has run out of ideas and doing nothing but repeat movies. Something that Jenny Stiven again said yesterday. We've got the prequel. Requel. Now we've got the requel. And what's a requel? When they just redo stuff they've done before. And Stormy, I don't know how you feel about this, mate, but New Trek... Is it just one long requel? Were they just redoing track? You know, I maybe different flavors of track. I was thinking this last week. I was thinking about this uh, question, ironically, but it was like Star Trek Discovery was like a lot of Star Trek stories, but there it was always ended in like some sort of. Uh, a therapy session you know it was just like oh we understand and now we accept you it was there was a lot of that so it's like it was this it was the therapy version of star trek and then you know brave new worlds is almost a shoot 'em up again and so yeah i think there's lots of different themes you know, these shows have it's all still star trek still in this big huge world but they 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 tell similar stories of exploration and whatnot in conflict, but all with a different flavor. And I think Star Trek Discovery was kind of there, you know, had a lot of therapy moments of therapy, as I like mm. moments of therapy scattered throughout the story. Yeah. I just, I'm watching a lot of Strange New Worlds at the moment. So I got a video coming out about it this week, actually. And I'm, I'm not gonna argue that actually, I just think they're making remaking the original series episodes. <clears throat> a lot of the, the, the last episode was, I'm not watching that. This is Roddenberry Star Trek all over this. This is if this is so Roddenberry. Um, they're looking How's at it all... got an AI running it. Well, <laughs> um, oh, don't start that argument. <laughs> got it covered. And um, go watch our live screen Wednesday if you want to talk about the script. The, the strike. Um, we will talk about the strike more because I think these people need these people, those people, uh, writers and actors. And everybody, they, they, Who are you they, calling they, these people? I know. I, got, mm -hmm. I actually generally had somebody scream at me once because I, I said them. When I was talking okay. with somebody, and I was just like, "Who are them?" Because well, them, <laughs> those people over there. there. <laughs> and so I ended up crying. Um, oh, okay, but um, it's a, I was going to say it's it's a word. It's a it's a descriptive word. Let's leave me alone. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So I forgot what I was saying. But I, I watched Picard season three though, and I'm like, "You've just watched Star Trek Nemesis, and um, and Star Trek First Contact, and you've just jiggled it about." And, um, and and made a new series. I'm, I'm like, I'm watching a lot of Star Trek and I'm thinking, I've seen this before. And how many other movies and things have we seen in the last 20 years? You think, this is very familiar. You know, change the names and, you know, the setting. And I'm like, I'm so sure. This is why I made the argument with the AI that actually I think AI could recreate 80% of what we see at the moment because I don't think it's that creative. I mean, well, yeah, the, the, it's a solid 80-20 rule, you know. Uh, 80% of, or 20% of your movies are going to pay for 80% of what you actually do. And I think it's kind of almost vice versa where 
eighty percent of what studios are doing are those safe routes. It's requels, reboots, franchises, IPs, big things that they know are going to do something. Uh, and then that that the twenty percent now is like the small budget stuff. It's like mm-hmm. creative and interesting, and 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 that's why horror movies I think are doing better than most other genres because they're the only things where like. Sure, you're going to rehash like the same 15, 20 little things almost every time. Maybe if, maybe bigger than that, there might be 30, 50 different things that are like your general tropes of horror movies. But there's so many ways to mix and match those. And you, you can be creative in, in any way of that and then make a little sci-fi horror. Make a little uh, uh, horror during the daylight in the middle of Sweden or something. Like Midsommar is terrifying, but mm-hmm. in a different way because it's not like – it's more of a thriller in a lot of ways. I, I think that genre is really doing it right, and it would be nice if a lot of these other genres would focus on that. Sci-fi's always been very good about that. There's still small budget sci-fi movies. Last year, you remember uh, I, I, Ryan Johnson of all people. Uh, he he was uh, leading the uh, interview for Vesper. Remember we did the that, that Vesper review, and, and Vesper was a great little sci-fi movie. Not a huge budget. Decent cast. It, it did exactly what it should. I think sci-fi and horror are, are really a good north star for for where things should go, I guess, and have always been in a lot of ways. And I, I think they remain that. <clears throat> Do you think Hollywood generally thinks we are, have got the attention span of Dory from bloody um, that fish Pixar movie, which I've forgot the name of? Finding so, Nemo, Flash Gordon. Nemo. Nemo. Keep on sequels, keep on sequels. And um, that's sort of thing. Um, but actually, are they right? Oh, well, I mean, just I have TikTok, Tom. Instagram, yields. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I, I think, you know, I think they are. Uh, sequels are easier to sell. It's easier to get somebody in the seat if it's a sequel, if they enjoy the original movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it, especially if you've got kids and you want to throw them... Um, Finding Nemo 3, oh, well, that'll keep the little tykes entertained for two hours. So you bundle every, trundle everybody off to the uh, theater to watch it. You know, it, it's always an easier sell if somebody's already a fan of it. Uh, the, the problem with sequels, of course, is usually they are not as good as the original. Very rarely do they get better. Oh, well, well, back that up with evidence. So you can't just make random statements like sequels are never as good as the original without backing it up with some evidence. And I will just throw out aliens, damn it. I don't have any others. That's literally the only one I can think of. Terminator 2. Terminator 2. Oh yeah, there there are you know there are older rings, but usually the sequels are typically always almost always not as good as um, What was that? There was um, one that was just really bad. I think it was like a uh, for Superman, the first one with Chris Reeve, Christopher Reeves, was it? Yeah, was better than the original, to be fair, probably. Yeah, it was. It was just yeah, Mar. Uh, I don't know. The second one was. I, I would argue the second one is at least as good with Emperor and everything. Uh, Emperor Zod? That's not right. Emperor Zod's um, Buzz Lightyear. General Zod. General Zod. Thank you. Um, I would say that was easily as good as the original. But then the third one, just went, <laughs> that went through a stargate on the edge of a cliff. I mean, <laughs> um, but yeah, generally speaking, sequels are not as good. But have they booked that trend in the last few years a little bit? Well, I mean, you know, I thought the, the first standalone, um, some of the standalone um, Marvel movies for specific characters. Um, were the first ones were good, the second ones kind of lacked, you know, with the ones with uh, uh, Iron Man 2 forgettable, huh? Iron Man 2 is pretty forgettable, Thor 2, Ant Man 2, yeah, but then Black Ragnarok. Panther 2, yeah, Thor Ragnarok, Doctor Strange, yeah, two. the third one was great. Um, but Captain America had a great number two, yeah, and and number three. I think, yeah, I, think anyway. America, I think the Captain Americas have got better as they've gone along. They're the best trilogy by far, I think, uh, out of all the Marvel stuff. Yeah. Um, Richard has just said it may be pretty much the only movie that's going to make any money at the cinema this year at the moment, Mission Impossible. Um, Besides horror movies. Yeah. It's just, it's, 
Toy Story 2. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sexual Hunt, you know, Blade Runner 2049 was, I mean, I liked it, but it did not stand up to the original, but it all, or the original brought out everything, you know, it created the entire world. And then in 2049, they got to play in it. So the nice polish of all the, the whole, all the new ideas that was in the original, well, it's still there, but you don't have new ideas. You just have a drama set with a specific uh, bit of collection of storytelling rules. Mm. This, this is a thing, you know, this is a replicant, this is a this, and this is the that. And this. So you've already learned that from the first movie, so you don't get any of that new stuff. You just get the drama and the interaction based yeah. on it. So a lot of times I think that's, I mean, it's still a great movie. I loved it. I bought it. But it was, it was not, there wasn't a lot of new stuff. Mm. Yeah. I think there's a difference as well between some films that are <clears throat> popular, so they have to do a sequel, and they feel like they have to do it really quickly. That was always the, the biggest mistake back in the day. We've got to do a sequel, and we've got to do it within two years because people will forget why they like the original. And I ever go, no, we can remember three years. It's 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 fine. I could I can even remember four, not much more than that because COVID messes with me after that. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, okay. But um, but but there's a difference I think between films like that and then films that are always designed to be a trilogy. I mean, you could argue The Godfather was always going to be that trilogy. Um. I can't think of any others off the top of my head. But Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings was always going to be that, so that they stand up with each other. But they're not really sequels, are they? They're 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 three parts of a story. No, nah, there's three books. Sorry, there's three, three books. books. One book, yeah. But yeah, Harry great. Potter. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Harry Potter just got better as it went along. Harry um, Potter. But yeah, Harry Potter. Um, but I mean. But when films are, I always think of RoboCop is the is the is the most is the most annoying example of this. Is that the RoboCop did much better than they thought it was going to do, so they rushed with RoboCop two. And I don't hate RoboCop two; I actually think it's an okay movie. But there was a plan for RoboCop two. The original writer wrote um, the story for it, but he couldn't get it finished in time, so they went with a different script. And I'm like, which is, <laughs> which is just stupid. They're now planning to make that script. Now that's that. That may be the that may be what MGM are going to do. They're going to make forty years movie. later. <laughs> like yeah, exactly forty years later. But I mean, I I just do you know what I mean. Let's like, 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 give the same question to the Harrisman. Does Hollywood just think we're a bunch of idiots, and are they partly right? I mean, yes, they've always thought that, and they've been a hundred percent right the entire time. What what did TVs? I mean, what is the technical definition or term for TV? Television programming. Like the whole point has been to program. A, I mean, it's it, reason it's, they call it a program. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's, they don't try to hide anything. You know, they've always thought we were pretty easy to to sway, and that they have with news, with television, with. The different eras of TV with the different eras of film, uh, it, it's it's pretty easy to sway a public if there's some big focal point for that public to focus on. You know, and, it's, it's, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 that, that's about it. I, I was just going to say, in studios historically, as always, have always uh, underestimated the audience. You know, we will, you know, we enjoy and will accept much more complicated stories and things that are kind of really out there. Um, Kubrick. Oh my, right? Mm -hmm. Just one word, Kubrick, you know? Um, it's like, you know, all the um, the executives that were, you know, for the first Star Wars movie, they were just, yeah, just give Lucas anything. Let's just get it done. Because they thought, it was, what the hell is this mess? He did such a good job, you know, <clears throat> with... with uh, earlier and then he comes up with what's this the, the the siths what yeah let's just get it over with let's finish it's just it's, it'll be yeah and then done you know they totally underestimated the audience and now he's a billionaire because they just gave away all the rights to everything mm. just to kind of you know because they underestimated the audience like there's nothing there's no value here you know lucas is coming up with some crazy thing you know, then there's just no value in what he's making. So let's just give it all away. What are we going to lose? And they generally, underestimated the audience and lost uh, billions of dollars. Uh, generally speaking, though, 
I think they have been ex executives know that if they make a sequel to something that's going to be popular, it will make money. And generally, yeah. they're right. Mm -hmm. But are we now seeing that people have actually smartened up and they've actually oh, yeah. realized that, no, I want to see something different? Um, well, the studios shot themselves in the foot by just being so gung ho about all the streaming stuff. I, I think uh, what was it? Mark the other day was talking about it with you on the your, your interview uh, for the shuttle pod stuff. Was they shot themselves in the foot by the, what was wrong with the TV landscape at the time? Nothing. Netflix was a lone outlier, and they an outlier they were. They were popular, but they weren't nearly as popular as they are now. They're more popular now because the entire industry has kind of circumvented themselves to deal with what Netflix is model is mm -hmm. and now these strikes are essentially about that too which is a whole different scenario uh not, not really that different of course they kind of play into the same things but it, it's all correlative and they they really the studios at least shot themselves in the foot by going all gung-ho on streaming well i wonder if it you know when netflix when they came out with stranger things it seems like that was some sort of you know seismic shift and everything it's like holy shit that well, show popular maybe well, you know, we should you know this uh, another streaming service is probably saying, Wait, we should do something else they've really got this thing for, i didn't know there was that much interest in shit you could do on streaming alone you know well and stranger I'm, things wasn't even first remember house of cards was first and house of cards was talk about a seismic shift in tv people just were like let's do that let's, let, yeah. let's do let's do that <laughs> but actually house of cards was just like i mean i think they just watched west wing and thought we just need yeah. a bit more x West Wing with assholes. Yeah. yeah. Well, more assholes. Well, I guess <laughs> you could argue it's like West Wing, but actually, let's do what people actually are like. Because all everyone in West Wing was just like, what can we do for the country? And reality is, what can I do for myself? And, um, and you know, Kevin Spacey, well, we won't mention him. He's got some Terrible human people. being, amazing actor. Wonderful performances, yeah. but you got to be crazy to get that crazy uh, uh, portrayed that well, I guess. <laughs> There's there is a big thing, isn't it? That, um, yeah, the, the crazy does crazy, <laughs> so yeah, really well. Um, and then, yeah, there's a there's a lot of actors out there that are complete dicks. But what are you gonna do? But I I, I think I agree. I I just think that yeah, executives think we're stupid, and far too often they're right because they will try to release something that's phenomenally brilliant and nobody watches it, or or takes or it takes too long for us to twig that it's great. And it skips by. And if something isn't makes the money immediately, they cancel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Immediately is the problem, isn't it? That worries me itself. Just thinking about the stream from yesterday with Jenny, and it was one of the things that I, I didn't necessarily like that she said was well, she didn't necessarily say it either. She was like, I'm waiting till the, the unions tell me to say something or something like that. Uh was to that they might tell us to stop going to the movie theaters. And I, I just don't agree with that at all because a, a lot of the times, even the, the big theaters, I mean, the the the, the big movies uh, more so with, with higher level actors, e even mid-level actors, a lot of the time, the smaller budgets, they still get a percentage of the film after the fact. So mm -hmm. if these people are not getting jobs, they're not getting paid, they're not working for the next eight, nine, 10 months, those going to go see those movies is the only way to put money in their pockets. And if you're going to go see the big movies with the big actors, those are the people donating to the funds of of the the, the insurance funds for SAG and, and for the WGA. Those are the people putting money in the pockets of all the other writers and all the other actors, the, the smaller fish that can't do that. And the only way to give them more money to do that is to go see their movies. Yeah. So I think that was a little bit of a, a, an oxymoron in that sense. The one yesterday from GateWorld. Yes, the gate. the, um, dial the gate um, uh, stream last night talking about the thing. And what they were basically saying was there were some ideas knocking around the writers and screen actors guild that maybe they would ask people to not go to the cinema to really hurt the studios. I would argue that doesn't just hurt the studios though. It also hurts the cinemas. And that, in the, that hurts the economic landscape of film and TV in general. Yeah. Well, They're not about, recovering from that. No, one of our biggest cinema chains in, in the UK just went under, literally like last week or week before. Um, and before that, Cineworld, which is the second biggest, um, had to shut a load down and got bought out. Um, Odeon are the only ones that are sort of going, and a lot of our sort of like independent cinemas closed. 
Um, I mean, well, going back to what Harris was saying, you know, it's um, <clears throat> COVID was a bad enough thing for cinemas, you know, and those that did survive still struggling, you know, because you know, we were talking during the, you know, talking about when we we're talking about uh, Indiana Jones, is like most of my coworkers, they were just going to wait for streaming. You know, they didn't want to be bothered by going to the theater. You know, when I went like opening weekend, there was hardly anybody in the theater. There wasn't hardly anybody in the cinema at all. I mean, there was the parking lot was mostly empty on a Saturday morning. Well, noonish. Mm-hmm. And when when the parking lot for an entire cinemaplex is em- mostly empty for a Saturday matinee. That there's you know, and you're not in the middle of COVID. You've recovered from COVID. That's really, really bad financial news for a lot of people. Something that I, somebody said to me that I found really interesting the other day was, um, has Disney shot themselves in the foot because they've started putting their movies on Disney Plus too quickly? Oh, so yeah. People just think, why should I go to the cinema? It'll be on Disney Plus in a month. Because it was, I mean, um, Black Widow was on at the same time. They put it behind a paywall initially, but then it was on within a few weeks. Avatar Way of Water is already on at, at, on Disney Plus. That 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 took a long time though. That took. I, mean, it didn't, I don't think it was that long. It was a couple. Of oh, oh no no no! James, James Cameron made sure of it. It was in theaters for at least what it, it released. Was it the it last was, week of December or first week of December? Yeah, I mean, it was in the theaters for a long time, but I. Yeah, four or five months. Yeah, but then within it's within a few weeks of it not being at the cinema though, it's on Disney Plus. Oh yeah, and, and you do want to do that though, because uh, you, you want more eyes on it. Usually, I, I think there there were two or three weeks leeway where there were some uh, uh, DVD sales because James Cameron is good. He's one of the people that's still very good about saying we need the time, let it sit, DVD, then put it wherever you want to put it. But because but- it went to some, it went to some pay cable company. Was it HBO that it went first? Not not online, but you had to have the cable subscription, the old no. school cable HBO. And then it was on there for a few weeks, I think, or maybe a month. And then there was, and then it went to uh, streaming, and then DVD. Or I just, it just feels. I remember, I, got, I, I, you know, ordered it. You know, I bought it off of Apple Plus um, early on. I mean, I may have bought it, but it didn't get delivered until all it's been seen mm-hmm. everywhere. But uh, Apple's doesn't work. Streaming, like I, 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 it's. I think I bought it before, like a few weeks before it started streaming. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I went and wanted to watch Renfield with um with um God. Nick Cage, and I'm not going to pay for it. It's still twelve pounds. It's come. It's gone down from twenty. It's now twelve. Um, but I'm not paying for it. But one because Harris told me it's not. Damn it! I did it so well earlier. Uh, Harris has told me lower your expectations. So I'm like that. No. But I must know the second I pay for it, it will be on bloody Netflix. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm not doing it. I bought the Nice Guys on DVD. So the last DVD I ever bought was the Nice Guys, and literally the day I got home with it, and I got, I'm gonna, I've been looking forward to this. I'm gonna watch the Nice Guys. And I sat down and I turned the TV on, and the first advert on Netflix was that the Nice Guys had premiered. It's like, damn it! Damn it! <laughs> I'm like, I don't mind spending money. I hate wasting money. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But um, then don't think about it like that. At least you have a digital library being built up. That that it's, it's I have. where physical media is gone. I feel like digital libraries are nice in a way because, especially well, right I've now, I've got twelve hundred DVDs sat in the garage that I now never look at. Uh, well, no, put them puppies on a disc and put them on your computer somehow. Be asked. Matthew said that. I'm like, I can't. Don't even know how. But anyway, me either. But he can help you. He could help you. And then donate them to your local library. No, nope, yeah, because one day they'll be retro. Um, well, anyway. You can still keep them, just do an extra copy, put on a little uh, 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 one drive. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and, and so Storm, as, as I'm ready to finish the stream now, anything you just want to throw out to annoy me? Oh, let me. Uh, well, <laughs> no, we, we did get to everything that I was, I was saving up for, you know. Um, the thing about yeah, well, crap. No, I don't. I can't think of anything else right now. Right. So, thank you so so much for everybody in the comments. Thank you so much for the couple of people that dropped. Um, no, speaking of no, the comments. No. Speaking of the comments, 
I think it's K Ra that came up with something. It was a really good idea. She's talking, or they were talking about, you know, an SGC on the moon and find out the moon is hollow, right? But it gave me an idea for a, <laughs> all Roland Emmerich movies put together. Go. <laughs> it gave me an idea, you know, for a new SG spinoff. Wouldn't <laughs> I don't think he's coming back. But wouldn't it be cool if there was like, you know, a whole spinoff on like the Alpha site? You know, like all the shit that goes on at just the alpha site, you know, because yeah. it's a much more unfiltered environment than, you know, the uh, the SGC. And it seems like it'd be more, you know, uh, more yeah. frontier, more uh, rough and tough, maybe. Because they are for the frontier aspect of things. Yeah. Where the SGC started like that and now it's kind of like, OK, we're, we'll send people. Over here, we'll, we'll we'll do whatever we need to. Where the alpha site can actually like continue exploration, <laughs> they can go out and venture. I know it'd be cool, wouldn't it? You know, I like the because you know, then you're out, you're not operating, you know, all the the formalities, you know, with a uh, General Hammond or whatever. You know, you're you're it's um, you have to make a lot of split decisions on your own, and you know, not w without the support of all the toys of Earth. You know, you're you're kind. Of, you know, so I think it'd be a lot of uh, interesting storytelling if you just do a show based on the Alpha side. What do you think, there, uh, Jamie? I think I've had a lovely week, so we can go for another ten minutes if you want. But um, I saw the um, I saw that comment as well, and I thought if Roland Emmerich is allowed to do Stargate, <laughs> we'll get a freaking Hollow Moon. Yes. Full of giant aliens, and they'll be called the Anunnaki. And uh, there'll be lizard people in it, and every other bloody ancient aliens theory that gets knocked around by that idiot with the big hair. Um, at some point, somebody will say it's not aliens, but it's aliens. Um, aliens. I like that idea. I, I, I like when we talked earlier about this, like um, international Stargate thing. We were talking about this being a Stargate. Um, style thing that, that there'd be lots of different shows potentially going on at once i love the idea of some of them being based in different languages different cultures different all this sort of thing for them but influences us so we, it'd be on netflix we watch spanish tv now anyway um I, I, i'm horribly dyslexic so i don't really want to read my television but i i would if it was on it but having something like on an alpha site yeah why not um, I love the idea of an alpha site. I love the idea of an ancient prequel. I love the idea of a show being based on one of the 304s or 305s or 306s, whatever we have at that point. Um, so we could have, I mean, Star Trek have done it, so why not? Why, why don't we have a, you know, a, a multiverse, you know, sorry, a, a TV show that actually explores the actual universe? Don't do what Star Wars did and have every damn episode on Tatooine. Don't do what Star Trek does and have we're on about a fourth Captain Kirk at the moment. We don't need to do that. Actually get out there and explore the universe. Actually take advantage of a franchise without redoing, rehashing, re bloody doing it all just for all oh, that. We've got a Star Wars episode and nobody mentioned Luke Skywalker for five minutes. I don't give a fuck. Just I want to there's there are other people out there. Let's explore it. You see, I, th I think you're right on. I think you're supporting uh, uh, Harrison and I's idea of Fast and Furious on Tatooine, written by George Lucas. They did that. Vin, Vin Diesel cool. has to go save Jar Jar Binks, but it turns out Jar Jar Binks is Darth Jar Jar. So be prepared. We, we are fanficking this like nobody's business. We've already had Fast and the Furious on Tatooine, though, because that was the whole Little Anakin movie. Yeah, but we didn't have Vin Diesel, though. In his I, he's been in his we just have to move. Boba was pretty bald, though. That's true. Yeah. 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 Like a banter. <laughs> um, I said, Pop Compound was saying that we'd get tired of that approach really quickly. I don't think we would. I, it, it, I, I, I think it. We either would absolutely love it, or it would be so annoying. From like the if if the first spinoff was annoying, then it would be awful. Uh, but if no, but I was gonna say, if it are, we wouldn't watch a lot of them. I'm probably what? going to watch Stargate India. I'm probably not going to watch it. The point is, it's 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 a Stargate show for India, so you maximize the potential of the show. I probably won't watch a Stargate show that's that's not in English. 
Well, okay, that's that's where my question will probably go next is like like they said yesterday, it was like, hey, they speak English over there. They speak English in all of these places. Are they gonna do these big old IP shows in English in another country, or are they gonna do it in their local language? I don't think they'll I think, do it in their local language, but it'll be set in the same universe. But in if it's international, isn't the easiest way to go just English? Because er, no, because everybody the speaks, people in most India people speak don't it. understand it. The point well, is yeah. to have a billion and a half people that speak Indian. We're well, speaking Indian. Indian? Hindi? Hindi? Or Hind- I don't know. Um, so whenever they speak in India, they're having a billion and a half people watching it in their own language. It would be made there. It would be produced there. Um, and it, But it would be in the Stargate universe. So then they might watch our Stargate as well. Um, and they would well, hope we might watch that Stargate, but we probably won't. But they don't care because a billion and a half Indians are going to watch it. Well, that's the thing. You can get all the English-speaking countries in the world to watch it if, if you do it in English. And I, I don't mean to be the American person like, do it all in English so we can listen and watch and do yada, yada, yada. But like <laughs> Kevin just said, India is English. They, I mean, they, they, they've been not English for... Well, here, here's I'm another... Now, people call Steve and things like that. <laughs> Where's here, here's 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 thing. Thing. Call Steve. Here's an interesting number for you. There are more speakers of English in China than there are uh, natural speakers, you know, first uh, first language speakers of English in the rest of the world. Yeah. I, I, I think English is the best way to do it. So they could do it all in English, but why not do a show actually in the native language, set in the native, that, for well, the I, I, people I, I, that live there? You, you know, should include their native language, but if you ostracize your internet, it, 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 the show doesn't stay international then. It becomes a very niche show for a, a specific but, region. But what you could then do is have actors that do crossover, and they would speak English in parts. Okay, so the Great Wall, parts of it spoken in Chinese, most of it spoken in English. And you could do that. And then, like I said, you have the, the was it, what was it, Shanzu was the Chinese um, uh, at 304? Was it the Shanzu or something like that? So, um, But they had their own ship, didn't they? China had their own 304. Um, you could you could base a series on that. Well, yeah, okay, they speak Chinese most of the time, but they would speak English at times as well. And they would, and you could even have stars from the different shows crossing over. Oh no, no, I, I love that idea. I think that's a good idea. the The only thing that would would be difficult about that is I think, uh, in the same way where you're gonna have, hold up. I think I know where Harris is going. It, it's almost it's, it's not necessarily it, it's a good idea to have, you know, the central you know, localized stories of Stargate here, or Stargate there. But the issue is it's a CPA issue with whoever's bank rolling the production because they want to maximize the value of every stinking dollar. This kind of goes back to where there's more control of the studio than there are most governments and saying what you produce. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so you're, it's just, it's a great idea and it'd be really culturally valuable, I think, especially artistically, mm-hmm. but there's a CPA with, with a spreadsheet that's just going to tell you, fuck no. Well, okay, that and then I, the, 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 the thought came back. Uh, it, it would, I, feel, I feel like it would be not to compare it to, to – this is just the only, like, comparison that came to mind was, like, I think people would think about it or, or not necessarily think about it, but mentally it would process the same way as, quote-unquote, woke stuff in, in, in the sense where the show would have to address that so much that they're not actually doing the show anymore. They would have to have like, oh, entire scenes for interpreters where instead just go out and do some cool shit. Excuse my French, but just go out and do cool sci-fi stuff. And I think if we take the time to focus on it's not focusing on gender or race or ideology or something like that, it would be focusing on on language. And and that's cool. I love the exploration of that. My birth mom speaks nine and a half languages like I I love polyglots and and, and being able to like go in a room and, and communicate with people that you might not be able to communicate with. Uh, in your language as well as their language or, or, or whatever that is. And that could definitely be a part of it. But same thing with the communication stones in SGU. I think it would be way too overused and it would dilute the series where we just want full sci-fi stuff. Well, you know, and, and John uh, from chat, he has, you know, he says, well, how are you going to deal with the, the whole one Stargate thing? 
Well, an idea I just had would be like, well, what if, you know, there's, you know, we do internationalize it, right? And there's a whole show just for the Indian SG team. You know, let's say, you know, there's a Russian team and a French team and a Chinese team. And it's just, you know, Hammond is still, you know, dial the gate. Well, not now, but, you know, somebody says, you know, dial the gate and that part's in English. And then, um, it, it's just an it, it is a, it is a series still based in the SGC and in the world. It's just focused on that one specific that's, internet that's team. That's think that's why I mentioned like a, the, a Chinese three hundred five or in, in you know a, a, the Russian. You wouldn't do it for Russia. There's no money in Russia. But, uh, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. And then um, but but it would all get dragged back to the main show, which would be the one that's going to be filmed in Canada. Probably, um, I, I just think it's a nice. I, I just, I just like the, if you're going to do an international TV show, I think Stargate is is ideally placed for it. You've got the central location, but it's an international, worldwide project, so you've got an excuse to have shows that are produced, a show that's produced in India, a show that's produced in China, and a show that. And let's be honest, they would have loads of English speaking in it, and they would do a bit of their native speaking. To you know, to, to to cross both bridges because they're still going to want to watch it because, at least for now, we are still the largest market in the world between America and Europe. We watch more TV than the rest of the world put together. Australia, yeah. we we watch we watch TV like it's going out crazy. All the former colonies. Yeah, well, the rest of the world's catching up, but at the moment we're still the biggest market. So if they're going to produce a TV show in India, they're still going to want us to watch it. That's where it'll be. But I just think it's an interesting idea. I, I don't have any sources to say that's what they're going to do. I did speak to somebody to say, look, that's what, you know, the, the, the well, I've mean, I got a video coming out in a few days. I'll explain it better there. But... All right, fine. We'll wait. Well, I haven't quite got my thinking straight yet. So I've got, I'm still I'm still trying to figure out how to describe it. You don't want to figure it out for the next, like, 20 minutes on stream and just, just really cycle through? No, because I'm going to now go and have some tv uh right oh. so hidden tape will we guys review the new babylon 5 movie in a few weeks i've ordered it i don't know when it comes out i forget it uh, it premieres next week at san diego comic-con so oh, no. i think it comes out just after that so i should get it the week after i will watch it and i will probably get a copy and give it away if people like it so, but i will be talking about it oh. Just real, real, real quick, did the Secular Monk just put in a great comment. How would you establish what is canon, what wasn't? If What if the offshoot show did something outside canon? And it's not like that, but like, okay, so what if these different offshoot shows start going to different dimensions? Do they come back to the same one? Do they? What if they time travel? No, uh, uh, whoever does, totally would have to do, they would have to be somebody in charge of all of them to keep them all set okay okay so they would they would be it's like the same show but they would be produced across so somebody yes i agree that somebody would have to keep it all straight mm. or it's going to get confusing because the idea would be to try to get everybody to watch all of it i think Th that, yeah that, that's what i would think north korean or south korean i always got those two mixed up why are we watching south korean tv and thing um, what did we say on the other side? There, there'd be a North Korean TV show would be very different. Um, yeah, very, very different. But yeah, um, what's the second language of Sidetrack? Gibberish, and I think it's mainly our first language. Brain farts. Non um, nonsense and brain farts. <laughs> it's, our, it's our main language. Yeah. English is our second language. Don't forget the roundup. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Andrew. What? What roundup? We did the roundup earlier because we all talked about what we uh, uh, watched earlier. Yes, we did. Wasn't that the roundup? Because usually we do that at the end. Yeah. I don't know why I did it at the start. I don't either. No. Hell, dude. Have you watched anything else? <laughs> no. I tried to watch Foundation Season 2 and realized my Apple subscription, uh, I got to resubscribe. <laughs> Oops. No idea. I'm going to start it tomorrow because I didn't think it had come out yet. So... But guys, thank you so much. As always, you've been marvelous um, about what I know. Oh, uh, I think you know about Stargate. Yes, I'll be doing that this week. Um, uh, doing a bit of a, what do we actually know about what's going on with Stargate? But unfortunately, that video is going to end up with 
but thanks to the actor strike, we now know nothing, basically. Mm. So it's a clean slate. So I will talk about what we think we know up till now. But then the problem is we now know that executives have got time to stop and think about shit. We don't want them thinking. Oh, for all mankind is that, I mean, I finished it. It's uh, I don't think there's a new season out, but yeah, that was an excellent show. Um, I've been meaning to watch it. It's, you know, it, it is a uh, alternative history of uh, the, the uh, race to land on the moon and the Russians won. That's the setup for it. And it's uh, produced by uh, Ronald Moore of uh, Battlestar Galactic fame and Outlander fame. Yeah, definitely must go watch. Some of the best, I tell you, with some of the best sci fi today is on Apple Plus. Yeah, Silo, that's, that's for all mankind, foundation, excellent. All of it's excellent. That quality over quantity over there. Yeah. Oh, and C. S E. I still need to watch that so bad. Oh, that's dude, the one that you really want to do that's your thing for today. That's your thing for this. Well, After I got to try it Apple first. Yeah. Fin, fix, get right with Apple in that feud. Oh, Foundation is excellent. Uh, it is on Apple, based on a series of novels. It's conceptual sci-fi, I think it's fair to say. Yes. Uh, um, so it does get, and it's, oh, you need to take notes. It jumps. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, from a series of novels, I think, back in the 50s or 60s by uh, Asimov. And I've always been a big fan of the Foundation trilogy. I just never knew how they were going to film it. You know, it was. Which I was just about to say, they've done an excellent job. I have all nine of those Asimov novels upstairs uh, in my little library right here. And uh, the, 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 I don't know if there's a way the expanse could kind of follow suit in some ways, but I don't think so just because, you know, they, their time ends up being a, a big thing with their later stuff or, or not really time. It's more the, uh, just the, the story picks up further down the line in time. There's and the same thing gap. with... Uh, so, so what? There's a 30-year gap between uh, book... Five, five and six. Season six. Are five and or six. There's six and seven. It's one of the two. Seven books. And there's the last five two books. Five and six. Years the gap here. Mm -hmm. Or the gap period. Uh, yeah, uh, Silo is excellent. Uh, it, follow, you know, it follows, uh, I think, personally, I think it follows the... Um, the books quite religiously or respectfully, I should say. Um, it was still, it's excellent. Even if they do vary off of your va favorite parts, it's still damn excellent. And the, uh, I only read the, uh, the first book, but it's still the, the climax at the end of the last episode is mm. still shattering. Mm. The thing I like about Silo though, is because it is based on a series of books and you see a sci-fi show like that. And I always have this, like it's, it's the lost moment in my head. And when I see something that's very conceptual and something that's um, quite big thinking, if you know what I mean, I'm thinking, are these guys going to paint themselves into a corner and then have to say, God did it. Um, but with Silo, you know there's three books there. You know the guy had what an idea of where he was going. And in the end, it's going to make sense. At no point will it be God did it. So I like that. I have a confidence watching a show like that. There you go. A foundation's the same. I know this is going somewhere. You know what I mean? And so, like some shows, I think. Uh, well, one thing, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Maria was talking about, yeah, the second uh, season two jumps about a hundred and some years. Uh, it is confusing, but the main characters remain the same. Which that's what I was trying to get at was that's my I really love how they did that the, introducing the Cleonastic dynasty of clones, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and because that's not part of Asimov's books at all, but. It really helps us mentally bridge the gap of time in, in a way it's that's really a slick idea. Yeah, it was. It was whoever came up with that to write in there. Thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was genius. I love that. I love the morning, the the thing in the twilight. I thought that's just such a clever idea. Anyway, guys, thank you. Oh, so in finishing the roundup, finishing the roundup. The other things that I'm reading still is a uh, Triana Moore Space Janitor. Oh my god, it's it's really really entertaining. Trianamore Space Janitor. Trust yeah. me. You said that was good. It was, it was, it's, it's, I'm it's, I've not seen it. Not Every seen time it. you said it's it. It's nowhere near hardcore sci fi. It's just fun on a space yeah. station with robots and murder. Gotta love it. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>
What's wrong with well, there's nothing? I mean, throwing some Nazis and some sharks, and I'm you've got me hooked. <laughs> <laughs> That's the literally four cornerstones. Yeah, they're the cornerstone of everything, really, isn't it? Nazis, sharks, yeah. robots, and uh, yeah. AI, and murder. yeah, murder, murder. murder. It's pronounced murder, murder, murder. 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 Uh, we used to have a TV show over here called Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. <laughs> No, don't tell him that. <laughs> so, we don't. We don't need. Do it they don't need any more of it. Trust me. Um, ooh, sentient Nazi sharks with freaking laser beams on their head. That's what we want. Freaking laser beams. That's Guys, the next uh, Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, yeah. Freaking laser beams. Our children in the basement was two seconds behind me. Um, right, guys. Thank you so much. We are going to call it an evening. Um, we will see you next week. I think we'll be talking a little bit about um, the strike. We'll maybe have a think more about this Stargate, where Stargate is now, and um, I'll do a revive. I'll do a update video in the week, but then we'll we'll have a chat about it. And and not just Stargate though. There are so many other sci-fi projects that I think we'll maybe have to think about which ones do we think might survive the um, strike, if that's okay. Yeah. So what what do we think actually might survive and what might not? Because Nothing is safe. So we'll have to think about it. So, guys, we will see you next week. Um, stay safe. Have fun. So, bye bye, everybody. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>